what is a unit test? In simple terms, a unit test is a function that tests a unit of work. Let's understand what we mean by this statement with an example. Right here, we have a very simple web page that accepts two numbers, numerator and denominator. For numerator, we have a value of 50 and for denominator, we have a value of 2. At this point, when we click the divide button, the page is going to divide the numerator by denominator. So 50 divided by 2, the result that is the quotient value is 25, which is displayed in the result text box. To achieve something like this, we might have a divide function like this. Notice this divide function has got two input parameters, both of them of type integer, numerator and denominator. This function is also returning an integer that is the quotient value. And if you look at the implementation, this is very straightforward. We are dividing the numerator by denominator. Whatever quotient value we get, we are storing that in this result variable. And finally, the function is returning that result. So the unit of work right here is to divide two numbers and return the quotient. So to test this unit of work, I have another function here. I named it test underscore divide. In real world applications, we follow different naming conventions to name our unit tests. We'll talk about those naming conventions in detail in a later video. So if you compare this unit test function with this function right here, there is another difference. And that difference is we have decorated this unit test function with test method attribute. So the obvious question that comes to our mind at this point is, what is test method attribute? We'll discuss in detail about this attribute in a later video. For now, understand that if you decorate a function with test method attribute, then that function is a test function, which is testing some unit of work in your application. Now let's look at the implementation. The implementation is straightforward. So within the function, we have a variable of type integer. We named it expected. There's a specific reason for doing so. We'll understand that in just a bit. And within that variable, we have a value of 5. And then we are calling this divide method. So this divide method is this divide method right here. So this divide method is present in this calculator class. This calculator class, in turn, is present in calculator.library namespace. So we are calling the divide method. And we are passing 10 as the value for the numerator, 2 as the value for the denominator. So when we divide 10 by 2, what should this function do? It should return the quotient value, which is 5. And we are getting that 5 and storing that in this variable actual. So when this function executes, the actual value, you know, what we get is stored in this variable. When we divide 10 by 2, what is the expected value? That's 5. So the expected value is present in this variable, and the actual value is going to be in this variable. And then we are using this assert class. This class has got several static methods, which we will discuss in detail in a later video. For now, we are using this method, r equal, which is going to check whether the expected value is equal to actual value. If that is true, then you know, this divide function is doing what it is supposed to do. And this function is checking that you know, is this divide function working the way it is supposed to work? When we divide 10 by 2, the expected value is 5. If the actual value is also 5, which is what we are asserting right here, then this unit test has passed. That means this function is doing what it is supposed to do.